Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video is about investigation procedure related to respiratory system. This is for medical surgical nursing. Let's get started with the video. We have a pulmonary function test, bronchoscopy, sputum test, ABG analysis and pulse oximetry as our procedure, investigation procedure for which we have to learn some basics and nursing management. Pulmonary function tests. This test helps to find out how well the lungs take and release air. Pulmonary function test is done by using pyrometer. This is the spirometer. We have a technique. We place the patient in a sitting position and we hand over this part to the patient. The patient does mouth breathing inside by clipping the nose and then the mouth breathing is recorded by the device and graphically presented through the paper. That graph helps us to find out capacity of the lungs which is pulmonary function test. The purpose is to monitor functioning of the lungs, to test the volume, measure the lung volume, capacity, rate and flow and gas exchange. Also, to detect the presence of dyspnea. Indications, pulmonary function test can be used during asthma, chronic dyspnea, COPD, upper airway obstruction due to anything, due to foreign body tumor or anything, restrictive ventilatory defect, pulmonary vascular disease, and pre-operative testing. Before performing any surgery, we can do this pulmonary function test as a pre-operative testing. Contraindications for this procedure can be pneumothorax, recent thoracic surgery, or hemoptysis, blood in the sputum. Findings can be, we can find through the paper that we saw in the diagram, we can find airway flow rate, lung volume, capacities, and gas exchange. The procedure is, patient either sits or stand, a sitting position would be more comfortable, Patient's nose should be clipped for a while and then mouth breathing should be done. Mouth breathing should be done in the spirometer. Mouthpiece connected to the spirometer. Patient intake and exhales into the spirometer, which can be graphically represented. Complications from this procedure can be, there is usually no complications. But sometimes there can be a potential complication which can be shortness of breath for a while, dizziness, coughing, asthma attack due to continuous deep breathing, there might be asthma attack. Next procedure is bronchoscopy. Bron through bronchoscopy, we can view or visualize all the organs of airway. This can be used to diagnose any disease or treat any disease both therapeutic and diagnostic purpose. Technique used in bronchoscopy is flexible and rigid bronchoscope. Normally, flexible bronchoscope is used more than rigid one. This is a bronchoscope. Indications can be foreign body in the upper or lower airway, pneumonia, mycobacterium tuberculosis, pulmonary infiltrate due to any kind of infection, lung cancer risk or potential lung cancer. Contraindications can be endotracheal obstruction, arrhythmia, respiratory failure with hypercapnia, unavailability of oxygen during the procedure. So while performing this procedure, we should make sure that we have artificial oxygen available with us so that we can provide the patient just in case. Findings can be stage of carcinoma. We can easily find out stage of carcinoma through this test. Also, we can localize the site of bleeding and find out the cause of hemoptysis. The procedure, patient lies on back. Unlike the previous procedure, in this procedure, patient lies on back with shoulder and neck support. We insert the bronchoscope to mouth or nose into pharynx and then reach up to trachea. Then we can examine all the abnormalities that we have suspected. Potential complication can be infection of the airway, bleeding, irritation of the vocal cord because we insert in the trachea, 
and the bronchial perforation. If we carelessly perform any step of the procedure, there might be bronchial perforation. Next procedure is sputum test. Sputum is the production from airway, which is a defense mechanism of the body, or because of the pathogen that has entered the airway, body secretes the sputum in an attempt to protect the airway. It is done to detect and identify the pathogen because there is pathogen present in the sputum. We can test the sputum to find out the nature of pathogen. The technique can be, we should obtain early morning sputum specimen in a sterile container. Indication is, when there is continuous production of sputum or phlegm for a long period of time, when there is previous history of tuberculosis, because sputum test is the confirmatory test of tuberculosis, it should be done if there is previous history of tuberculosis and coughing for a long time to detect the nature of, nature of the pathogen. Contraindication can be cerebral aneurysm, unsuitable state of disease condition. When the disease condition is not at correct stage, if it is at incubation period or before incubation period, the pathogen cannot be correctly identified in the sputum. So, during unsuitable state of disease condition, sputum test is contraindicated. The suitable state of disease condition can be found out through sign and symptoms. Findings that we get from sputum test is the nature of pathogen present in the airway. Procedure can be deep breathing and coughing. If you are dealing with a ward patient, deep breathing and coughing. Early morning sputum is needed. If the patient is unable to do so, perform nebulization. Or if you are working in ICU, perform suction. Next procedure is arterial blood gas analysis. This is used to measure the acid base balance to respiratory system or oxygen carbon dioxide exchange in the respiratory system. We perform EBG analysis by puncturing the artery at a radial, brachial or femoral site. Indications can be respiratory failure, cardiac failure, renal failure, sepsis, burn and poisoning. So whenever we need to know whether there is respiratory acid base balance in the body or not, we need to perform ABG analysis. Contraindications can be anticoagulant therapy. If the patient is undergoing anticoagulant therapy, patient cannot afford any kind of bleeding. So better not puncture at deep site. Similarly, when there is low platelet count, we should not attempt this test. When there is liver disease or coagulopathy, still we cannot perform this test. A liver disease because during liver disease, patient's production of blood component is disturbed. So we should first of all treat the liver disease and then perform EBG. Coagulopathy, similarly, if there is overlying infection or bone injury at the insertion site, we better not attempt EBG during that time. These are the blood draw points for EBG analysis, radial artery, brachial artery, and femoral artery. Components of ABG can be pH, pressure of carbon dioxide, pressure of oxygen, and bicarbonate. Before analyzing ABG results, you need to know normal ABG values, like normal blood pH, normal pressure of carbon dioxide, oxygen, normal oxygen saturation of arterial blood, and some other things like bicarbonate. Uh, carboxyhemoglobinemia, methemoglobinemia in percentage. After that, we can analyze the result. Result analysis is done in terms of respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. I have added about metabolic as well, but as we are concerned about respiratory system, we should see during respiratory acidosis, pH is decreased, whether uh, or um, in respiratory alkalosis, pH is increased. H plus values increases in respiratory acidosis, whereas it decreases in alkalosis. There are value of bicarbonate pressure of carbon dioxide that either increases 
or decreases as a primary and secondary disturbance. These are the difference between respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. We have feature, numerical feature, disease condition in which acidosis or alkalosis might occur, sign and symptoms, and nursing management in short. Similarly, during metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, feature, disease condition, sign symptoms, and nursing management. Complications of arterial blood gas process can be infection at puncture site. If the insertion is done incorrectly, there might be infection. Bleeding at the site if the patient has coagulopathy, undergoing any medicine, any anticoagulant medicine, then there might be bleeding. Accumulation of blood under the skin can be seen. Also, there might be thrombus in the artery, thrombus deposit in the artery. Numbness of the hand might occur for few hours to days if the insertion of needle is not done properly. Next procedure is pulse oximetry. This is a method of monitoring oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. Full form of SpO2 is saturation of peripheral oxygen. This is the saturation of oxygen with hemoglobin at the peripheral part of the body, fingers. That's why we perform it through the fingers. This is a pulse oximeter. The procedure for this is pulse oximeter passes a light beam through the blood vessel, which can detect amount of light absorbed by each hemoglobin molecule. That is shown in the form of percentage. That light beam can also detect the movement of your blood vessel. There is an involuntary movement of blood vessel that can be detected by the light beam, which shows per minute how many times it is moving. That is your pulse rate. Thank you so much.